design a vending machine. Hey everyone, welcome back to another Exponent System Design mock interview. My name is Kevin and on today's show we have Josefa. We're going to be doing a system design question, one that's a little bit non-tech. Um, but before we get into that, Josefa, do you mind just telling the audience a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, hi everyone, uh, I'm Josefa. Uh, I'm an engineering manager at uh, Facebook. Prior to that, I worked uh, at PayPal and Wellfront. Great, thanks. So we're going to be doing a system design mock interview today. And this is what I like to ask. Design a vending machine. Cool. All right. So um, a vending machine is generally uh, a machine which is kind of that we see at stations by the street. It's uh, kind of operated by itself. Um, it's different from any other systems where it's not you know, a distributed system used by millions of people. It's concurrently used by one person at a time and maybe a few hundred to a thousand, a few thousand people in, in a day. So uh, as Kevin, Kevin said, right, that it's not the, your typical system design interview. So some of the key, key things that I would want to uh, talk about here is or the requirements for a vending machine is basically the uh, ability to select an item um, the ability to pay for an item. So uh, over here, I was looking to think that uh, payments can we can we do credit cards or do we want also want to account for uh, cash payments? Yeah, let's just stick with cash for this example. Okay, so cash payments. All right. Uh, the next thing we want to do is once the item is selected, um, payment is made. Being able to dispense the item and and the last one is um, given that the the machine is used a few times a day being able to notify notify the the owner or servicing uh, agent uh, about inventory status Started. So basically, if, if any item, any particular item is low on inventory, um, they're able to, the, the machine is able to notify um, the, the concerned, concerned person. Um, so I, as I mentioned that this is not, not a typical uh, system design. So one of the things I would want to do over here is, is kind of do like a flow chart slash state diagram kind of uh, thing to figure out what are the different life cycles that an item can can go through so if you if, if you if you look at it um, you know you you start off with um, and and since you since you know we only have and since we only have about 20 minutes or 30 minutes for this which requirements would you want to scope for mvp mm, sure i think we would we would want to scope the first three requirements for for the mvp Okay, cool. Yeah, let's do cool. that. Yeah, let me let me quickly quickly do this. So we have time to go over the system. So basically, this is your your steady state or your um, re ready ready state of your of your system. The next thing you you would look at is you um, you are selecting an item and then you are making making the the payment. So over here, essentially, what's happening is you are. selecting an item right now uh, if payment is successful uh, you are essentially going to dispense the item so if this is uh, success over here so it's kind of and 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 if it fails you are essentially kind of going back back away right so in terms of uh, failure. The the other thing you can um, also also look in terms of payment is that uh, given that this is a cash cash only system, you would also dispense change if if there is any from from the payment payment system. So at, at a high level, these are some the, the, these are the life cycle uh, that a typical selection can go through. 
you can add a few more that you can select something and cancel uh, start start all uh, over um, yeah um, in terms of the system diagram basically um, let's let's think of this so you, you have your user over here um, the system the vending machine can consist of two or three uh, key key components right so let me kind of split them out so one component is basically taking care of your item selection so this this component um, has the mapping of an item to to a number right so in most vending machines you, you, you can think of it it's a it's a two 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 a two two by two matrix or a m, m into n matrix right where every row and every column has a certain item associated with it so this this um, kind of component has that mapping uh, stored in it so basically when you select an item it knows which item you are you are talking about uh, the next the next thing is is your 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 payment system so uh, as we said that we are dealing with a with a cash system over here so essentially the the idea of of this system is um, taking in the change calculating whether you whether users are given the right amount of money and if there is uh, money to be dispensed out change it will dispense out that change right so essentially like if you if i were to break this down a little bit more you have two main things right you have your calculating um, money paid and then this is dispensing change now if you're if you're looking at you know mechanisms of fraud you can think of it that you know the system needs to be aware in terms of fraud as well whether people are entering counterfeit currency and whatnot but for the sake of simplicity we'll assume that everyone's uh, kind of entering or giving uh, correct correct currency over here uh, the next the next part um, in the system is your dispensing dispensing of the item item itself right so basically the 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 idea of this system here here is that when an item is, is selected uh, it will kind of make those mechanical or uh, physical mechanical movements to be able to dispense of that that item uh, out uh, to uh, to the to the to the user right so this essentially at a high level will will encompass uh, the whole whole vending machine right so the user doesn't directly interact with one system it kind of interacts with all these systems through through the vending mach machine interface right so there is this one almost this oop this, is there a good way to represent this this one uh, box kind of thing over here which which is the vending machine itself and the user interacts with with this system through through some kind of an interface here right so generally that you see is you you have your 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 keypad over here and this keypad input of this keypad essentially is the one that starts talking talking with this system which is your input selection which then kind of goes to your payment and then from there it kind of goes to your dispensing system which at the end of the day kind of is your output uh, of the uh, item that that goes to the user got it and so let's say that a user is buying something that's in stock can you walk me through your diagram and and sh tell me how that looks like sure so basically something is in stock the user will key key in key in the the location um of uh, of the item so basically a, a, a row and a and a column combination uh, over here once that happens the item selection knows what item it is correspondingly what is the price of that item the payment system then kind of takes in the money it and the item selection system has given the payment system uh, told the payment system essentially that what is the value of the item 
uh, the payment system then calculates the money that that's been given if there is any change that needs to be dispensed out it'll dispense out of that change uh, to the user once that is successfully completed it triggers uh, a notification or a, or a or some kind of a relay to to the dispensing system which will then make those physical movements to dispense of the of the item got it and so this is for something that's in stock now if we're thinking about something that's out of stock what would happen so ideally um, the way i'm thinking about this right now is that typically if any ending any welding machine has a has a glass door to it so if something is out of stock um, the user generally knows that that item is not there but let's say even with that if the user keys in the uh, through the keypad uh, the uh, the coordinates of the item that is out of stock the item selection uh, system uh, kind of has that count of inventory as well uh, of whether that item which is keyed in is valid or not and in case something is out of stock it would kind of respond back uh, to the to the user with with an error saying that uh, this item is not available got it now in terms of payment what if someone doesn't input the right amount of money let's say they underpay yeah so basically the payment system is is aware of um, what what the amount is so it it it, it knows that some dollar value is the minimum amount that it needs to needs to get so basically over here uh, it will it will wait uh, for that amount to come in so what we could you could you could think of it is that we have like a like a timeout uh, or a time interval running where from the time the item is selected to um, this certain number of time this time period the user needs to enter enter the correct um, the money um, to the, to the system if in in that duration the user does not enter the whole amount or as you said it enters lesser amount uh, basically the the system would cancel the transaction return the money back and kind of go back to its or to its ready ready state okay and what if the user overpays so basically if the user user overpays um the the system over here would count count the money um, you know if 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 it's coins or if it different uh, uh, notes it will then calculate the the dispensing system your calculates the difference what it needs to uh, dispense out and along with the difference it also calculates which currencies or which uh, combinations of coins and notes it needs to dispense out to the user and kind of gives that notification to the payment system to do that uh, uh, yeah okay that makes sense uh, for dispensing change. Uh, we, we, we talked about if the item is out of stock. So let's also just for a comprehensive sake, let's talk about if sure. there's no change. So if, if the system cannot give the change, what would happen uh, here? Yeah, so there are a couple, um, couple options here, right? So, so the one, one thing you can do is that if the system cannot uh, give the right amount of change back, the the system can either cancel the transaction and just give everything back to the user without dispensing the item or it can ask the user to enter give uh, a different uh, denomination of of currency so that uh, it can kind of recalculate uh, the uh, the difference or like if if you know you want to build a build a system where the system then looks at reducing the price of the item to the next available um, change it, it has so it, it could kind of be a combination of any of those those features most likely you would want to cancel the transaction and uh, kind of give a message to the user that there is not enough enough change right so the dispensing system kind of would trigger that kind of a uh, uh, an, a notification or an error to your to your payment system right like not you know change cool yeah just just so the user knows it's not their error but it's a uh, error on yeah. the system's end yeah exactly cool. the also on, on the same lines right over here you can you can think of it is that there is like a, a notification system just 
right? So this could this could be through some kind of an SMS or whatever um, other other communication system where it's kind of listening from input from from both of these systems to kind of um, map out if anything uh, needs uh, refilling. So essentially, if uh, you are running low on items or you are running low on uh, low on change, uh, this system would kind of notify uh, the servicing comp person to to take a look. Got it. And just to push you a little bit more, I know that we scope this to be just cash payments only, but can you talk a little bit about how this might work with a credit card payment? Sure. So with a credit card payment, you you, you would want to, uh, you know, have some kind of an integration with uh, a payment gateway. So one one requirement or right now the way the, the system is, it need not necessarily be connected to, to, to the internet, right? Because this is uh, almost like a closed loop system uh, by itself. Now, if if we want to process uh, credit card transactions, uh, you you would want to have some kind of a uh, a payment um, gateway um, that the payment system um, talks to. So your at your at your input end, you the you give the ability uh, for the user to to insert that transaction. The system um, you know reads reads that transaction, reads the credit card information, and the payment system then passes this to your um, to your payment gateway, which which would then uh, be able to trigger uh, make the payment uh, go through and the payment gateway would essentially you know uh, respond back uh, depending on whether the payment is successful or not great cool josefa thanks for your comprehensive overview of how this vending machine would work and uh, before we wrap up the video do you mind telling the audience a few pieces of advice if they were to encounter this question in their interview Sure. Um, with any as, as with any system design uh, interview, it's a very uh, open-ended question. So I I highly recommend um, the audience or the interviewers to be able to kind of uh, precisely uh, bottle down what the scope needs to be. Um, look at maybe two or three requirements that you want to want to tackle, uh, so that you you have enough time to go cover them. Uh, thoroughly versus trying to kind of do do 10 things so and uh, basically try to model your system on how a user would would actually use it that's where you will be able to kind of figure out what are the edge cases and uh, how to what are the optimizations that that you need to build uh, in your in your system great yep definitely makes sense and thanks again for your time, Josefa, for the audience. Good luck with your upcoming system design interview. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below to let us know that this video is valuable for you. And of course, check out hundreds more videos just like this at tryexponent.com. Thanks for watching and good luck on your upcoming interview.